Rise and shine, mothers and brothers and cheese wedges and handlebars all over the world. Rise and shine. Let it grow and let it flow. What's up, Jack? Can't forget you. Hey, I just want to share with you why I smoke a pipe. I've got all kinds of pipes from all price ranges, everything from briar pipes. This is a beautiful little briar that I purchased, I don't know, a couple months ago maybe. An apple shape, it's round, it fits in the hand perfectly, it just, just feels good in the hand. Even if I didn't smoke it, I would hold it. <laughs> For some reason, I just, and it's light. The bit is real skinny, so it kind of fits. You can clench it and just kind of like put it in your mouth real easy. But I also like corn cobs, which are my favorite pipes in the whole world. And for those of you that are inclined to start smoking a pipe or puffing on a pipe, I don't inhale, I just puff. And uh, I enjoy the various nuances and aromas from all over, uh, from inside, from outside, opening up the tin of tobacco. There's so many sensory things, sight, smell, taste, and touch. You just, there's, it's such a winning grab bag when you get into the pipe smoking hobby that uh, you, you just score every single time that you have a pipe. And if you, if you don't succumb to the pressure that you have to smoke something prestigious or, and I'm talking about pipes, not tobacco, because prestigious tobaccos are definitely worth it. If you, if you succumb to the pressure that you need to smoke a prestigious pipe or a big name, you could end up really not liking your hobby. So what I would advise you to do is allow all your senses to work in your favor. Go with what you enjoy visually, what looks good to you. Go with what feels good to you. That's gonna be huge, huge, huge. It doesn't matter the price, and I'll get to that in just a second. What's gonna happen is you're going to feel your pipe. Now this is a Cobbett Shire by Missouri Meerschaum. It's an acorn uh, type of bowl. That's a corn cob that's filled in with plaster and smoothed out. And then they put a little cone-shaped thing at the bottom there. See that? They put a wooden shank in it, a ferrule, and then a longer pipe bit. So this would be considered a mini church warden. A normal church warden might be a little bit longer than this. I like it because it's a skinny bit. Some people like them big honking bits in their mouth and I just, uh, it doesn't work for me. That's why you have to go with what feels good because you're clenching something, you're putting something. Some pipes are meant to be puffed and then put down or held in the hand the whole time. I like sometimes puffing and then just putting my hand down while the pipe is in my mouth. So I would do this. If it's too heavy, you're gonna feel it in your jaw and on your teeth. Um, if the angle is not correct, if it's bent weird, or it, it's just gonna have an odd feel, and you'll find yourself unconsciously avoiding it. That's why go w use all your senses when it comes to picking a pipe. I love the way this feels. Is it no surprise? Because I just showed you the apple briar pipe. This is acorn. In other words, it's round and it's smooth and it feels good. But I am sometimes a study in contrast. I like this. I like a longer pipe because a lot of times I'll just keep my, my elbow on the arm of a chair or even at my side, like right now. I'm not smoke. I don't smoke before I go to work because I don't want to smell like a pipe while I'm working very close to people. I only smoke at night or on a day off. But my elbow is kind of like on my side, just naturally drop down to my side. And the longer stem allows you to do that. And, and remember too, 
Pipes are the original laser pointer. I'm not kidding you. I had professors in college, this is how far back I go, that smoked pipes while they were teaching. And they would, this is before there were pointers. And they would use their pipe as a pointer to something on the blackboard. This is even before whiteboards. <laughs> so they would point to something. So this is the original laser pointer. It's kind of fun. You'll want bigger pipes for longer sessions, smaller pipes for smaller sessions. And when I say a sesh, I'm talking about time-wise. But my favorite pipe in the world, believe it or not, in the whole world, and this is, if you are inclined to even think that you want to start pipe smoking, a corn cob pipe, this is about four, four to six dollars, depending on where you are. If you, buy it at a drugstore if you get it uh, online. I get mine at Missouri Meerschaum, which is corncobpipe.com. I really enjoy them. Now, this is a, a first run. I bought this at a, a local smoke shop, literally $4.79. It was just under $5. It's kind of like a red corn cob, reddish. It's rough, it's not filled in with plaster like this here, which is smooth. So the study in contrast, I go from very smooth to very rough. They also sell this shaped bowl that's filled in with plaster. And you see them in every single drugstore, except CVS that doesn't smell any, sell anything that's uh, smoking related anymore. But most of your drugstores, pharmacies will carry something like this. It's gonna cost you four to six dollars. You can get a straight or bent bit. This is bent. I like, I'll tell you why I like the bent for this particular pipe. I'm clenching, but not tight. I'm kind of like, it's almost like, you know, like you're like a pry bar. It's just like hanging in, in my mouth. You can't see my mouth because of my mustache and beard. But it's just kind of hanging. I'm not like, clamping down on it. And that little bend right there rests on my bottom lip and it's just comfortable. It's not like I'm prying my mouth open. So it's just kind of a... And as I'm driving, if I clench it, I find that um, uh, it doesn't absorb the shock really well. So like when I'm driving, watch. Can you see it move? It's just kind of, it's not bouncing, but it's kind of like moving a little bit as I drive. So kind of, it kind of moves with me. It lights perfect, it smokes perfect. One of the biggest problems you'll have with pipes is you just have to relight them a million times. And that's a combination of the type of pipe you have, the depth of the bowl, the draft hole in the bottom, and the tobacco. Is the, is the tobacco too wet? Is it not rubbed out enough? If it's a flake or um, if it's a pressed tobacco, is it, did you, did you rub it so, did, did you rub it not enough where it, it's not airy and um, it's too solid? Think about the clumps of grass under a lawnmower. You take out a clump of grass and you break it up a little bit. That's kind of like what rubbing out a tobacco is. But here you go, less than $5. And then I always have a pipe tool. You need a pipe tool. Pipe tools are good for tamping and scooping. Some pipe tools have a little pick on them. The pipe tool that I keep in my car, let me show you if I can find it. My, my car pipe tool, is what they call a pipe nail. See that? It's got a tamper on one end and a little scoopy thing on the other. It looks bigger than like a dab tool. Uh, it's good for scooping tobacco out or maybe creating an airway, but it's called a pipe nail. I, I use this for my car, my pipe tools. I keep one in my pocket and also at home in my smoking area. The tamper, after you do the first light, which is called the charring light, you kind of tamp down the ashes. Because when you light tobacco, it's going to kind of rise up a little bit in the bowl, and then you need to tamp it down again. 
cheapest pipe, the cheapest pipe you can get, other than making your own, is the best smoker, honest to God. You don't want to go too fast. You'll know that you're smoking your pipe too fast if the bowl gets too hot. If you just keep stoking that ember, firing up that ember, it's just gonna burn so hot it'll be uncomfortable. Even the smoke will be hot. So what I suggest is you kind of do some deeper puffs to get the ember fired up, tamp it, and then here's a method of puffing that will serve you well for the rest of your life on Earth, and that is you're sipping. Think about sipping. Now, you know I sip things out of a shot glass. I'm a sipper. I'm not a slammer. I don't, you know, I find that there's people that just got to fire up a pipe, smoke it like a, like a freight train, you know, and then it gets too hot and it distorts the flavor. You don't want your pipe being too hot. So when I say sip, I don't know if you can even see my mouth. I'm just, watch this, watch. Watch my mouth and my cheeks as I'm sipping. Sipping is kind of like a very light puffing. And when I say puffing, I'm not like blowing my cheeks out. I'm not gonna look like a puffer fish. Watch. You see that? And what happens is a little smoke will come off the top, a little smoke will come out of your mouth. If you want a little more flavor and uh, experience the tobacco through your nose more, then you kind of take a little bit of a deeper puff and just open your mouth and the smoke will seek a way out. It won't go far out of your mouth. It'll just kind of like come out of your mouth and go up. And that way you'll get a whiff of the tobacco that is just amazing. So. I'll just go like this sometimes and then open my mouth and the smoke comes out and I get to smell it with my nose. Otherwise, I'm smelling it as the vapors come up through my sinuses into my nose, but it's, it's a whole different sensation. One tobacco can give you five different notes. There's the note that when you open up a tin, this is cult blood red moon, when you open this tin up, ah, and smell it. Ah, beautiful. That's the tin note. After it burns and fills the room with smoke, that's called the room note. And then there's various notes when, you, when you're doing a deep puff and you're tasting it in your mouth, the vapors rise up through your sinuses. And then there's that one where just the smoke just kind of leaks out of your mouth and comes up to your nose and you get a chance to smell it like that. For me, for me, that is the sweet spot in smoking. But you have to really slow down. It teaches you to slow down. Now, the social, uh, the social benefits of smoking a pipe. People like pipes. If you smoke an aromatic tobacco, nine times out of ten, people will say, oh, I like the way that smells. If you're smoking in English or uh, Balkan blend, there's only an inexperienced pipe smoking person will say that smells gnarly. I can smell most tobaccos because I appreciate the notes and nuances of all tobaccos. Uh, people will like aromatics. I call them sidewalk blends. You could be sitting on a bench on a sidewalk in a city as people go by. They're going to say, oh, that smells really good. Women will always say that reminds me of my father or reminds me of my grandfather. It'll take them back. Non-pipe smokers will, will tell you uh, that it reminds them of somebody, or they'll they'll make it clear that they're not a smoker. I'm not a smoker, but that does smell good. It's like, all right, whatever, dude. You ever notice, like, people who don't do shit always got to make a statement first before they add their two cents. It's like, I don't eat meat, but if I did, you know, it's like, I don't smoke, but if I did, it's like, all right, whatever. You know. I like having a steak and smoking a pipe. As a matter of fact, one of these days, I'm gonna freak out the, all the health nuts and I'm gonna smoke a steak. I'm gonna put a steak in my pipe and I'm gonna smoke it. So I'll piss off the anti-tobacco people and the vegetarians 
all in one shot. That's a joke. The social benefits are when you smoke a pipe with other people, it makes you talk with them. Cigarette smokers are not big talkers. Cigar people talk half and half. Pipe smokers are just, they take a puff, they talk, but they, they're not commenting on a lot of like impulsive crap. Pipe smokers are people that, um, that really enjoy deeper conversation or more philosophical stuff like the tobacco. Uh, tobacconist where I get pipe tobacco at the brick and mortar store. He says every one of his pipe smoker customers is a gentleman. I like that. I don't mind being thrown into that category and I'm sure you wouldn't either. Even if you're a woman. A gentle woman. Social benefits. Uh, personal benefits. It slows you down. You can't hurry a pipe. You can't hurry a pipe. Uh, it makes you think. When you watch the smoke rise up Visualize your problems, your challenges, becoming nothing, disappearing. Challenges disappear in the presence of thought. You hear me? Challenges disappear when you think about them. But not think about how bad it is and ruminating on negativity. But when you just think about issues without being negative... Solutions tend to emerge eventually, somehow, some way. It might take several sessions, but solutions do eventually emerge. Uh, another thing, pipes keep your mouth shut, keep you from talking too much. Two guys can can go outside, sit down, smoke a pipe. I was with her booth of her booth Briar pipes. He sells his pipes on Etsy. You need to check him out on Facebook. Herb Booth Briar Pipes. He makes Briar Pipes. Uh, sometimes we meet at a kind of like this bikery sports bar kind of thing. And, you know, a lot of guys with beards and tattoos and that kind of stuff there. And, and during, during the break, when the band takes a break in between sets, Herb and I would go outside and smoke a pipe. We might have our drink with us. We might take a couple sips of our beers puff on the pipe, say a few words, and then go back in and, and just really prize that, that 10, 15 minutes outside smoking a pipe. But what was there to prize? There wasn't a lot of conversation. There wasn't a lot of chit chat. This is very typical of guys too. But we enjoyed a pipe together. He had his pipe, I had my pipe, and it was a nice time. I can still think about that time that he, me and Herb went outside had our pipes. And it was kind of fun smelling it. And everybody that came outside, ooh, that smells good. Again, that reminds me of my father. That reminds me of my grandfather. You know, if you smoke, a, if you go to a bar, which I do, I, I go to, there's a couple like biker bars that I go to. I'll go outside, I go outside and smoke a pipe. Here's the thing. Let's say you go out and, and you're listening to bands and stuff like that and you smoke a pipe outside because you can't smoke inside anymore. In the time that you smoke one pipe, I guarantee you there's going to be like five to seven people who come out and smoke a cigarette. So the cigarette smokers come and go. Pipe smokers stay. They build relationships. They solidify relationships. If you have any questions about pipes and you like some of my pipe talk, let me know down below. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel, please. And also forward this video to, I'll use my pipe as a laser pointer, and forward this video to someone who you think would appreciate it. And I appreciate you. So have a great day.